So we've come back to Slough Creek for more on the ground investigation and research for the new map, the new expanded map of the Slough Creek area for Wolf Quest Anniversary Edition. Behind me you can see Little Butte, which is where you spawn in the old game. And uh, we're not going up there today. We went up there last time, spectacular views of the whole meadow. But this time we're going to be heading up the valley, up Slough Creek uh, watershed, and looking for some new stuff that's going to be uh, not in the old game, but in the new expanded map in the new game. The whole place is much greener than it was when we were here before. Last time our visit was in late September when everything had really browned up. Now it's late August and uh, it's been a very wet summer, so this is actually a much greener um, environment than it would normally be at this time of year, but that's helpful for us because it looks closer to what it looks like in the springtime when wolves are raising their pups. I'm not too happy about this grass. It is so dense and so tall. Tall grass like this is tough for computers to render, and even if your computer can render it, it's pretty annoying to have to run through as a wolf. One of the new animals that you'll see in Slough Creek is uh, beavers, and here is a beaver lodge. This is fresh mud. The, the beavers bring up mud in their little hands and pat it down and stuff, and so this is still damp. Um, so I think they're still living here. And if you look down in there, you can actually see the underwater entrance that they've built to get into their lodge. As we hiked back at the end of the day, we saw several beavers swimming around just outside their lodge. Beavers are going to be a fun addition to uh, Slough Creek and Anniversary Edition. They're not a big food source for wolves in Yellowstone. In fact, it's not really positively known that uh, wolves even eat beavers in Yellowstone, but they do in northern Minnesota. That's very well documented. So it is plausible, and uh, they, won't be, they won't be a big food source, but it'll be a different hunting challenge. We're here to see the place again with our own eyes to take hundreds of photographs that we can use as reference as we're working on the 3D environment of Slough Creek. We're also meeting with one of our science advisors, Dr. Dan Staler, who's a wolf biologist here at Yellowstone and is going to answer lots and lots of our questions about wolves and especially wolf pups. So we're heading up into Aspen Heights. Uh, we did place a den there in the game, but today I'm more interested in what's just on the other side of that ridge there. So let's go see. And here it is, it's a lake. We knew there was a lake back here, just over the slope from Aspen Heights 10. So this is McBride Lake. The little jewels here set amongst the uh, granite rocks uh, above uh, and around Slough Creek. It's also coincidentally at uh, about 2,000 meters elevation, which I can tell on my little uh, altimeter app on my phone. And what's interesting about that is that wolves, when they're looking for uh, place to make their den in the winter. They look for sites that are between about 2,000 meters and 2,300 meters elevation. So we're going to head up into the hills here above McBride Lake and see if we can find any good den sites. So right here on the shores of McBride Lake, we have this big old rock and a little crevice underneath. Um, not a lot of room right there now, but it's a dirt floor and a wolf could easily dig it out and uh, use this as a starting point for a nice cozy den. Another thing that makes a good den location is access to water. So Lake McBride is an appealing location, but there are a lot of little creeks flowing down the slopes into Slough Creek in the springtime, so plenty of opportunities. What else do wolves look for in a den site? One thing, they want a nice, sunny, south-facing slope. When the pups are born in mid-April, it's really still winter up here in Yellowstone, and so they want to catch as much of that warm spring sunshine as they can to melt the snow and give their pups a warm place to hang out in their first weeks of life. On slopes like this, wolves often look for old dens abandoned by other animals like foxes and coyotes. They use these as a starting point and dig them out, enlarge them to make them big enough for their own pups. And of course, if they've already got a nice cozy den established on a nice south-facing slope, they'll often return to that year after year. Some people wonder why the logs in the game um, aren't obstacles. You can just go right through them. But do you really want to be doing this when you're chasing an elk at 30 miles an hour?
Another popular den site is under the spreading roots of an old tree. This one is not a den yet, but you can see the potential. If you're a wolf, you might look for a nice den site here under a jumble of rocks somewhere. This is pretty rough, but uh, you know, there might be a good spot up here if you look hard. So we're putting in all these types of dens in the Slough Creek map, though some digging may be required. Of course, everyone also wants to go inside their den. That gets a little tricky, but, um, but we'll see. So there's many different kinds of places that a wolf might find or make for a den site. But the important thing to remember is that they only live in their den for about two months while the pups are very young. And then they head out. They abandon the den and my journey to a rendezvous site up in the highlands, they might just slowly expand their territory, but they're basically at that point following the elk herds. They don't need the den anymore because as Dave Meach says, the wolf's body is its shelter. And after two months, the pups are big enough and strong enough to move with the pack as it searches for prey. And now we come to the creek again, Slough Creek again, and all new creek crossings. So there'll be lots of new places to check out, but the wise wolf crosses first without their pups to make sure it's not too deep. There's an old bison bull dozing there across the creek. And we have to get that away to get back to the main trail to head back to the trailhead. And uh, you're supposed to keep your distance from bison bulls because they've got an attitude. So we're gonna have to sneak around, keep our distance, keep as far away as we can. If we disturb him, if we piss him off, I don't know, the mobile version of Wolf Quest may never be finished. I think he cares about us. Dude, have some dignity. And we've made it to Second Meadow! A few miles upstream from First Meadow, the part of Slough Creek that we all know and love from the game. You know, I love the Amethyst map and the, and the, and the Lamar Valley, but there's just something about Slough Creek. It's, it's still got that feeling of Yellowstone vastness, but because the creek cuts through the whole long valley, it just gives it this intimacy that is really special and we're really excited to bring a bigger and better version of Slough Creek to the game. So today we return to Slough Creek. We hiked across First Meadow up to Lake McBride, looked around the hills above that for possible wolf den sites, crossed the creek again, and we got to Second Meadow of Slough Creek. So we've had a fabulous day hiking here and uh, learned a lot about what the place looks like. But we've still, even after this full day here, we've only seen maybe not even a quarter of the map of the new Slough Creek map in Wolf Quest Anniversary Edition. So there's lots more that'll be in the game that we haven't even seen here. And now we have to head back to the trailhead, head back to work and uh, make that map as close as we can to as beautiful as the real place. All right, well that hike was two months ago now, so you want to see how the Slough Creek map is coming along? Still a work in progress, but it's coming along. <laughs>